Hi folks, this is Dr. Don. I want to take a few minutes and do a walkthrough of the Lab 2 remix and report portions of the lab assignment. I've already started up my RStudio and I've opened up the student name uh, RMD file and made a copy of that and I've renamed it with my name. You can see it up here, Lab 02 D right, and also in the first portion, I put my name uh, and the date in there. Okay, so now we read down, scroll through this. You can read that, and you should. First thing we're going to do is load the libraries. I'm just going to click on the green run button to run that current chunk. And wait a few seconds here. And look for the ready prompt down here in the bottom and I've got that so now I can go on down. The next thing we want to do is create our data frame we're going to use. We're using the Gapminder package. Remember we just opened that in the library right up here. Now we want to create a data frame that we can use. So we're going to run this, click the, and there we've got our Gapminder uh, data frame. It already opened this little blue triangle circle that you click on and will expand it. You can see we've got six variables, 1704 observations, and here are our variables. We've got country, continent, year, life, expectancy, population. Let me drag this down a little bit. And the last variable there is the GDP per capita, which is what we're going to want to use. So that's how you can inspect your data frame. Sometimes if they're very big, you may just want to double click on the name and open it here in your source editor window. So let's go on down. And it first thing it says, we're going to look at income, but we're going to start by looking back what we did in the rehearse. And it says in section 8.2.3, we made a histogram, copy that code chunk and rerun it here. So I'm going to go back over here. I keep Windows open, and you can't see that tab there. But here is my uh, Rehearse 2, and I've navigated down to 8.2.3. And here is that code chunk, code chunk 27. So I'll just copy that code, go back to our studio, put my insertion cursor there, and then Control-V to paste that code in. Now we can run it. You can see we've got a histogram of life expectancy from Gapminder. And this is not quite a bell shape. It's trying to be bell shaped, but we've got a peak here. But it doesn't really have a really bad skew either to the left or to the right. But we can look back at this and pay attention to it here. You can see in the first row, we're calling the ggplot function. And we're going to use that Gapminder data frame and we want our x aesthetic the x variable to be life expectancy and that's this variable over here and then the next line we have the geometry we want a histogram and we tell it we want color equal white which would be the lines around the histogram 50 bins and tell you what let's go through this and i'll just show you this if I want to just run the very first line of code, I'll stop before the plus, and then I use on a PC, control enter. I don't know what that is exactly on a Mac. I've looked it up. But you see, we created our basic graph, and we've got life expectancy down here on the x-axis. So that's what that first code does. And the plus, of course, in ggplot tells us there's another line. So let's run the first two lines. Stop before the plus, control enter. And now we've got our basic histogram there. And you can see it defaults, as I didn't give it a name for the x-axis and y-axis, it defaults to the name of the variable that I put on the x-axis. And then it gives just a count, which is a standard on the y-axis. So if I keep running it line by line like that and I'm going to add this theme which just 
gets rid of some of the background there, control enter. Now you can see we just simple white. And that's all that's changed. And then the next three things, we're adding a label for the Y axis, the Y label, the X axis label, life expectancy, and the title for the graph, GG title, histogram of life expectancy from Gapminder. So now we just again run the whole chunk and we've got our Y label, X label, graph label, and our nice histogram. So that kind of gives you an idea of what we're going to do here. As we scroll on down, and you should read all of that, the next phase is to take that code chunk and we're going to do some editing. And I've added some commentary here in order to tell you what I've done. The first thing I did, the little pound sign makes that a comment and not a line of code. Change the X aesthetic variable to GDP per cap. Remember, I looked over here and I saw that GDP per cap is how they spell, capitalize that variable. And that's what we want to run for income. And I added that in down here in the first line. The X aesthetic is now GDP per cap. We didn't change the second line, which is just the color white in the bins. But we've added this layer to focus because the GDP per cap changes so dramatically from what we had before, we're going to put an X limit and we want to go, this is our combined function, zero for the min and 50,000 for the max. That makes it easier for us to see the chart. There's that theme again. And now I went through here and just changed the titles to something more appropriate. Number of countries for X, GDP per capita, excuse me, for, X, for Y, GDP per capita with a dollar sign for X and then the charge chart title down here at the end. And now I'm just going to run that. You can see we've got our chart. So that's the first problem, and you'll see basically that's how we work all the way through the uh, lab one. So I hope this helps.